Exposing Kagame's Lies and Arrogance, DRC and Chisakati's Urgent Mission. A conglomerate of uh, journalists, <laughs> journalists <laughs> who are really up in arms against us, but these are just, uh, you know, they are, they are wasting their time. They should have used their money and their energy for something else. Rwanda is there and will prosper and will be better every year uh, in spite of them. In this video, I delve into today's interview with Rwandan President Paul Kagame on RBA, where his remarks have sparked significant controversy. Many viewers noted Kagame's behavior and statements, which conveyed a sense of personal ownership over Rwanda. His words and demeanor suggested that he views himself as synonymous with the country, implying he believes he can act without accountability. This attitude has raised concerns among critics who fear it reflects a broader issue of authoritarianism and the suppression of dissent in Rwanda. Kagame's interview featured several moments that highlighted this troubling perspective. He spoke with a tone of absolute authority, dismissing any potential consequences for his actions and decisions. For instance, when addressing criticisms and opposition, Kagame's responses were often dismissive and condescending, reinforcing the perception that he sees himself above reproach. This interview has intensified the debate about Rwanda's political climate, where Kagame's long tenure and tight control over the government have led many to question the state of democracy and human rights in the country. The interview serves as a stark reminder of Rwanda's ongoing struggle for political freedom and accountability. Many of us wonder about the purpose of Kagame's interview, suspecting it might be an attempt to project strength when his forces suffer significant losses on the battlefield in the DRC. Kagame's decision to speak on national television about potential dangers he may face in the coming months raises questions. Notably, he avoided mentioning the war in the DRC during the recent swearing-in ceremony of his new ministers, despite public criticism urging him to address the issue. His silence on the DRC conflict in that context contrasts sharply with his later television appearance, suggesting a strategic choice to control the narrative and perhaps deflect attention from his military's struggles. In his televised interview, Kagame focused predominantly on himself and his concerns, omitting any discussion about the soldiers being killed in the DRC. This omission is striking, especially given the gravity of the situation on the ground. His lack of acknowledgement of the sacrifices made by his troops could be seen as a deliberate move to avoid further criticism or to shift the spotlight away from the escalating conflict. By concentrating on his potential dangers, Kagame might be attempting to garner sympathy or justify future actions while sidestepping the pressing issue of his military's heavy losses in the DRC. It's maddening when you hear Kagame being attacked as if he is the only one with the license or right to defend his country. President Paul Kagame of Rwanda has often been portrayed as a defender of his nation, especially in the context of regional conflicts. However, his actions, particularly his incursions into the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, have sparked significant controversy and criticism. Kagame's military operations in the DRC purportedly aimed at neutralizing hostile forces and ensuring Rwanda's security have led to substantial civilian casualties and widespread destruction. Critics argue that Kagame's aggressive stance undermines regional stability and violates international laws. The notion that Kagame alone holds the moral high ground in defending his nation dismisses the legitimate grievances and defensive rights of neighboring countries like the DRC. On the other hand, the DRC, a nation struggling with its internal conflicts and external aggressions, asserts its right to defend its sovereignty against Rwandan incursions. The DRC's government and military leaders argue that just as Kagame claims to protect Rwanda, the DRC has an equal right to safeguard its territory and citizens. If Kagame's actions persist in threatening Congolese sovereignty, the DRC maintains that it must retaliate, even if this means taking military action on Rwandan soil. 
This stance highlights the complex dynamics of regional security and the often overlooked principle of mutual defense. The DRC's position underscores the broader implications of Kagame's actions, suggesting that unchecked aggression could escalate into a wider conflict, compelling both nations to reconsider their approaches to security and diplomacy. When you follow Kagame's interview, it becomes evident that he is uneasy or aware of the dire situation in the DRC. This is apparent from his demeanor and the silence of his usually vocal agents on social media. These agents, who once flooded platforms with triumphant claims of capturing new territories in the DRC, are now conspicuously absent. The propaganda machine that boasted of military successes has gone quiet, suggesting a significant shift in the conflict's dynamics and potentially signaling setbacks for Kagame's forces. Currently, it is the people of the DRC who dominate the narrative on social media, sharing accounts of Kagame's soldiers being captured or killed. These posts frequently include images and videos of stolen weapons, providing tangible evidence of the RDF's struggles. Additionally, there are numerous reports and footage of bombs and planes attacking RDF's opposition forces, painting a grim picture of the ongoing conflict. This shift in online discourse underscores the growing resistance against Kagami's troops and highlights the increasing volatility and intensity of the situation in the DRC. President Kagame of Rwanda must address the concerns of Rwandan citizens and the parents of the young soldiers he is deploying to the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC. Reports indicate that multiple Rwandan soldiers are losing their lives in this conflict raising serious questions about the sustainability and moral implications of this military engagement. Kagame owes it to the families of these soldiers to clarify his strategic objectives and outline a timeline for when these troops will be brought back home. The persistent loss of life not only impacts the morale of the nation, but also risks depleting Rwanda's military strength. Should Rwanda face an attack from the DRC, the current drain on its military resources could leave it vulnerable, underscoring the urgent need for a clear and transparent strategy from the leadership. Meanwhile, the DRC's current strategy is gaining favor among observers who appreciate its shift from rhetoric to action. The DRC's military operations against Kagami's RDF and M23 forces are perceived as a decisive move to reclaim sovereignty and restore regional peace. Accepting a ceasefire at this juncture would be premature and counterproductive. The ongoing offensive aims to completely oust Kagame's forces from Congolese territory, a goal that supporters argue must be achieved to ensure lasting stability. This assertive approach by the DRC underscores the nation's resolve to address security challenges head-on rather than through prolonged negotiations that may fail to yield tangible results. The population in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, living in refugee camps is enduring severe hardships that demand immediate and effective intervention from the DRC government. These camps, often overcrowded and under-resourced, are home to thousands of displaced individuals who have fled ongoing conflict, violence, and instability in the region. Bare necessities such as food, clean water, medical care, and shelter are in critically short supply, leading to widespread malnutrition, disease, and suffering among the camp inhabitants. The lack of proper sanitation facilities exacerbates the health crisis, causing outbreaks of preventable diseases like cholera and dysentery. Additionally, the insecurity within and around the camps poses a constant threat to the safety and well-being of the refugees, including women and children, who are particularly vulnerable to exploitation and abuse. The DRC government must prioritize finding sustainable solutions to alleviate the plight of these refugees. This includes enhancing security measures to protect the camps from armed groups and ensuring the safe delivery of humanitarian aid. The government should work closely with international organizations and NGOs to secure adequate funding and resources to address the urgent needs of the displaced population Moreover, long-term strategies are essential to tackle the root causes of displacement, such as negotiating peace agreements, 
implementing effective disarmament, demobilization, and reintegration DDR, programs, and promoting economic development in conflict-affected areas. By adopting a comprehensive approach that combines immediate relief efforts with long-term stability initiatives, the DRC government can significantly improve the living conditions of refugees and pave the way for a more secure and prosperous future for the region. In today's interview, President Paul Kagame once again demonstrated his unwavering stance and unyielding approach towards the ongoing conflicts in the region. His rhetoric underscored a belief that only military action against him or a complete removal from power could bring about lasting peace. This sentiment echoes a long-standing assertion that Kagame responds solely to the language of force, a notion reinforced by his continued behavior and policies. The interview revealed his confidence in Rwanda's security, suggesting that his aggressive posture will persist as long as his homeland remains unscathed by direct attacks. Given this, it becomes imperative for the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, to devise a robust strategy that compels Kagame to reconsider his stance. This would likely involve a combination of diplomatic efforts and military preparedness to pose a credible threat to his regime. Such a plan would create a situation where Kagame must acknowledge and address the grievances that fuel regional instability. The hope is that by applying pressure directly to Kagame's regime, the DRC can shift its approach, leading to a more peaceful and cooperative regional dynamic. This strategic move would require careful planning, international support, and a clear understanding of the potential repercussions. But it may be the only viable path to achieving enduring peace. Uh, to be the ones to address those problems. So what I reject is to, with this background, where you are part of the problem and you have your own problems and everything else related to that, to be the one to come to me and uh, instruct me how I must deal with my problems. My problem is actually, as we know it, that you are also part of, or that some of them originate from you. So that's how we have come to learn ourselves to look at what we are responsible for and deal with that the best way we can in our interests, in the interests of our people, to be able to make progress and so on and so forth listen to critics, or, but not put really much weight on that until, unless they're talking about something real, they can support with the facts. Uh, that I see is also a problem. I, I may see that, absolutely. Uh, and, and then I will deal with that. But I will deal with that because I have recognized, I have seen it is a problem and is affecting me, I will not do it because they are demanding me to do it. That's, that's the difference. So, critics, and so it's, 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 it's a cliche. It's, people say too much of nothing and they make it sound like there is a value in it. Uh, but we will receive it as, as the world we live in. That's the, the dictates are, and um, so we, we, we deal with the critics and live our lives <laughs> and, and do what we are supposed to do. And, and I don't see, think there is any, well, sometimes the, the critics even want to go ahead and uh, yeah, not only bash you, but uh, cause you more problems and uh, literally crush you. But uh, this is what we, as, as leaders and as a people who think we have some level of integrity to determine our own destiny, this is what we can refuse. You, you know, people, many people have given this example. You, 
you may crush somebody physically, but you cannot crush the, the spirit, the idea, the, what is right in, in them. I think that's a lesson we have learned as Rwandans, and that's where I come from. I, I even speak for myself. You, you, you really can't crush me, you can't crush my spirit, you can't crush my aspirations, my de- desire, my what I think is right. What I think is right that I have to do, and this is the same thing that uh, we think the country has learned a lot from. Uh, we are not uh, afraid of anything. Uh, we, we've learned a lot. So we've learned to be humble, respectful. And uh, when it comes to not respecting us, we, we, we ignore you. We don't have to fight over it, but we ignore you. Uh, and, and you feel it. Uh, so and uh, our country may be small, uh, but we are not, as I have said before, we are not small people. We are a people with the um, dignity, with the self-respect, with the... We have decided that uh, you, you can't really crush us. Yes, we resist it to, to your surprise. Yes. And, and uh, that's why we have come from nothing, literally. That's why we've risen out of the ashes. It's because we refuse to be crushed by some people who want to buy our methods. They will do it directly, they will do it indirectly, they will... I was seeing, I'm saying this because you are a journalist, you must be aware of that. I was seeing a, a conglomerate of journalists, <laughs> journalists <laughs> <laughs> who are really up in arms against us, but these are just, uh, you know, they are, they are wasting their time. They should have used their money and their energy for something else. Rwanda is there and will prosper and will be better every year uh, in spite of them. Thank you, Excellency. <clears throat> in the midst of a geopolitical change, how can Rwanda and Africa position itself? How can we build our own table instead of fighting for a seat at the table? It's, it's a, a very common thing, and we have really many people understand this. We've talked about it before. We always talk about it. As again, 